Hi guys, so this is a different type of video, and this is a video where I will sort of go through some writing techniques and how to write stuff and how to get inspired and stuff like that. Just a noob sort of talking to a noob about how to write, basically. And so let's get right into it. So hello fellow pot questers, it is I, Aaron the Pot Quester, and today we're going to talk about how to write a good opening and also how to get inspired to actually start writing. And I'm not going to talk about basic world building stuff, that can be a whole other episode because it's a lot of stuff. So let's just get started. So before you even start to write, you do need to get inspired. And getting inspired is not easy. Because, well, writing a book isn't easy at all, and you do need to put in the time to actually get the words down. And honestly, that's sort of the start of your journey, and you can't really start anything if you're going to write like 6,000 words and quit. So, how do you get inspired? Well, sometimes, one thing that really helps is having a notebook to write down all of your thoughts when you were inspired. For example, thinking of what the main character feels, or some sort of scene that you really, really like inside your head. You write that stuff down, and you sort of write it down in a notebook. Later on, if you look at it, and you can, if you can relieve that feeling of being inspired again by looking at it, that is a good way to get back into the game. Another thing that you can do is to have a cookbook. I myself have a really, I have in my notes app on my phone, I have a really long cookbook and I've got a lot of quotes in there. And these quotes don't have to be like Socrates, Aristotle, like super philosophy. No, that is not what I mean. I mean quotes that get you sort of inspired and fired up. This could be badass quotes or philosophical quotes, inspirational quotes, quotes that's gonna be in movies or books that you really really like or action scenes or one-liners that you really really liked stuff like that can you get hyped up and can get you thinking and inspired which is uh, again a really good idea and in my quote book for example i've got a line like from an anime for example like if strength is justice then is powerlessness a crime that is a quote that is inside my quote book and i look at that and i get inspired like justice and like stuff that i was right about and i get inspired by the that kind of different kinds of creativity and i sort of just pound bounce that back into my writing and that's how that's one of the ways that i do get inspired and another way that you can get inspired to get started and keep going are well this is probably the like the thing that will work for the most people and this is a music now Music music can be distracting for some people. However, a lot of the times music is directly sort of related to our feelings. For example, even if you feel like crap, if you listen to a really happy or upbeat song for a while, your mood will eventually improve. This is the same for writing. If you read and if you no, if you listen to really music that that makes you want to write and gets you inspired, well, that's going to help a lot. And this could be like rock music that makes you feel badass and like super cool because your main character is super cool so you want to write more. Or you want, or for example, you could listen to a movie OST like Harry Potter or something and then you listen to that and you'll feel inspired to write something magical. Or perhaps you listen to a Christmas song and you want to write something that feels special. Or you listen to a anime OST which makes you feel hyped up. Or... Yeah, or anything really. Any kinds of music that makes you feel hyped up and ready to go and inspired and raring to go, it will definitely help. And although if you're like running a music and you're sort of like, you listen to this music and you write really fast, there's quite a bit of mistakes. But if you're at a, at a stage where you can't really get anything done and you're like stuck at a certain word count and you can't move on, then it's, a, it's a really not a bad idea to do that. And these are just some ways to get inspired. And of course, in the middle of your writing, if you're bored of your writing, it's not a bad idea to skip. You don't have to write start to finish. In fact, before I start writing, I already think of the start and the end of the series that I am going to write. And this is a good idea because you can spend the rest of the book pretty much tricking your readers. And I do this like pretty much for everything that I write. So this is a good idea. And like, and like I said, it's not a bad idea to skip. For example, when I was writing, I am still editing my book, but when I was writing the first draft and just getting the words down, I was around uh, 20,000 words. That's like half, that's like a, like a bit of the book. And I was just, I was just bored. I didn't want to write the middle because I, I was really 
really inspired for the last part of the book, the finale, the final battle, the final showdown. So I was like, okay, then why don't I write the final showdown first? And I did. And then I filled the middle one because later on I got a lot more ideas and got inspired to fill that gap. And now I have a book that I'm editing, although it sucks at the moment. So this is, this is again, a good technique if you're feeling really inspired for the end of the book. Don't hold off, just skip and go to the end and finish that first. Now I'm going to talk about openings. The opening sequence of a book is probably the most, actually the ending is the most important. But to get to the ending, the middle and the, especially the start needs to be good because you need to pull in your readers. And a lot of good openings does this by having a question. Uh, let me think of one. Let's see. Let's say it said, Ben looked out of the window and there were, there were green spots upon it, which looked like blood. He sighed. What had happened? He was on a spaceship, but he didn't know this would happen. Okay, he's on a spaceship. Why is he on a spaceship? Blood? Green blood? What's going on? Is this aliens or is this some sort of space creature or... Is there like mutants or something? What's going on? What's up with the green blood? Why is there green blood outside of the spaceship window? It makes you ask questions. It makes you delve in. You want to know more. And that is what you need to do. The worst thing that you can do is at the start of the book is like this is, of course, some authors do this. And if you can make it work, it works. But a lot of the times what happens, it, what's a lot of like bad authors do bad is to sort of throw in all the information at the start. Like, for example, let's say Lord of the Flies. Like, that's, it pretty much starts with Ralph and, um, like, the kids just sort of, like, going into right into the action, right? Imagine if Lord of the Flies started. 24 children had... A, a plane had crashed in, the, in World War II, and uh, 24 children has been stranded on an island. And now they must survive because... They must try to survive. Ralph, yeah, like, what if it started like that? Wouldn't it be like, oh, that's what it's about? Not, not really pulling me in right there. So, like, the way that you show the characters or make the people ask questions or make them curious is how you make them read your book. And another good way, another way to think about this is the two by two ratio. And basically what I mean by this is you need to give two and make them ask two. The full picture, let's say, is full. Is, let's say this is a full picture. Divide that into four and give them pieces of it, fragments of it. In fact, half of it. Because if you teach them nothing, they're going to be just confused. And there's no point in having a confused reader because they're not going to be able to understand or enjoy anything. So you can give them just enough information or half of it so that they can go on and sort of understand what's happening to some extent. However, don't give them the full story because otherwise they won't read the rest of your book. And that's how to pretty much write an opening sequence. And the opening sequence, of course, could... What? It's too long, so I'll tell you at the end. It's too long. Why do you say that? It's too long. I haven't finished yet. I'll finish it a little bit. I'll finish it a little bit. Okay. And, and for the opening sequence, you could either... Uh, um, if you're writing an action style book, it's also a good idea to maybe you should drop your character into action. like. He swung his sword and his enemy, enemy like ducked or something. Start with that. Straight into the action right there. Or you could start with some sort of mysterious scene building. Like someone walking towards a particular place and they have a gun in their hand. What's going to happen? Immediate, immediate tension. And this is, and I'll tell you how to accomplish that tension and how to sort of write that kind of style in the next episode. So this is just really basic stuff about the opening sequence and how you can get inspired. Um, I'm, I'm like not a professional myself. I'm, I want to be, but I'm not. So I'm just teaching you from teaching you guys from the experience that I got while writing, which isn't a lot, but still it's fresh in my memory. So I just wanted to share it with you guys. And like always, your plot quester, Aaron the plot quester, hope you guys enjoyed. And if you have any sort of questions about writing, just ask down in the comment section below. If you're an author, definitely just give me some advice if you can. And if you disagree or agree with anything, again, leave comments. Have a good day and goodbye.